All right, very pleased to be joined by one of UCLA's newest additions, uh, guard Sky Clark. Uh, Sky, how does it feel to be a Bruin? Nah, it feels great. It feels great. This is home for me, so I'm happy to be back. How uh, you? I mean, you've gone through the recruiting process a couple of times now, but um, going back to high school days, you must have been pretty familiar with Cronin and the program at that point. H- how has that relationship kind of built and grown over time? Yeah, no, it's been great. Um, Cronin started recruiting me back in, I believe, like ninth grade. So we've always kept communication open, just like how you been. Hope everything's been good. Um, even after the whole recruiting process, but, um, but nah, coach Crony, he's a great guy. Uh, I'm been familiar with the coaching staff as well. Cause he's kept pretty much the same coaches. Yes. Staff. So, so yeah, it's been really good. See, so all right. So, um, your timeline, you originally committed to Illinois, um, then transferred to Louisville and now, uh, transferred to UCLA. The process I imagine for you has changed each time, you know, that first time out of high school, it's the traditional high school recruitment of a, you know, a a high quality prospect. You're getting a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. Each of the transfer recruitments has been shorter. Um, What kind of has changed with your mindset or your approach to it? um, Especially this last time when you picked UCLA. Yeah, no, really just looking for a place I could call home. And uh, Louisville was great. Uh, Coach Kenny Payne, even though it was obviously it was a rough year for for everybody involved, but um, but it was great. Uh, me and Coach KP, we still keep an open line. Uh, I know he's always someone I can go to, like if I if I need anything, even just someone to talk to. Uh, he's a really great person. But uh, Coach Cronin, obviously, he's a winning coach, and that was first and foremost the one thing that I was looking for is I need to be somewhere where I want to win. So I don't want to win big. And um, so that was the biggest thing. And I know Coach Cronin, he's always up front. He's never going to lie. He's going to tell you exactly how it is. And uh, he's, he's not shy about that. So so that was something I looked for as well, uh, just in my growth as, as a player and as a person. What was his uh, no lying straight talk pitch to you? What, 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 what did he give you? No, nah, he just told me, he told me to really say I need to cut down my turnovers. I need to up my field goal percentage. Um, and and both shooting and three point shooting and free throw and everything, uh, he said I need to get in better shape. And he said he said he'll get me there. So so he's always someone I, I could trust. You know, it's funny. I was uh, I've talked to a few of the guys, and Eric said something very similar. He was saying, you know, when you go through this process a couple of times, you notice who the BSers are, and then who the guys yeah. who are giving it to you straight. And he said, and I wonder, do you think that appeals to you more as a as a guy who's now been around the block a little bit compared to, you know, when you're in high school and you're kind of wide eyed about everything. Yeah, for sure. I've done a lot of maturing over the last few years. Um, and it's definitely something I look for because uh, there's a lot of coaches that they'll tell you one thing, but when you get there, it's something, it's something completely different, but I know with Cronin, it's a hundred percent real. And then, um, so you, you mentioned Kenny Payne and, and Louisville and, and, that whole situation ended up kind of chaotic uh, just because of everything that was going on there. Do you think you learned anything from that? Do you think there's anything you can take away from that whole experience of things just not going the way they should have um, and, and how that helped you grow? Yeah. Um, it really helped me like understand like the business side of, of basketball, cause especially with NIL now and everything basketball has become more of a business thing with, uh, with college sports um and really just learning how to like enjoy things outside of basketball um obviously basketball is is still one of my top priorities after god and family but um but you know it's always good to you know when things are if basketball is your only outlet then when things aren't going your way or things are not going the way you wanted then you know it's hard to to get up out of that funk so really just finding ways to to um, express myself and enjoy things outside of hoops. So um, you 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 said one of the funniest things um, I can remember in one of these promotional videos when everyone was asked um, during, I think, one of the early summer workouts who their favorite NBA player was. And everyone's saying, you know, LeBron or whoever. 
And you drop a Louis Scola. Um, I got to know what – so was that just you picking the most random basketball player or do you have a connection with Scola or do you remember watching him as a kid or wh- what was the genesis of that answer? No, I have no connection with Scola. <laughs> uh, I just remember watching him on the – because I'm a Lakers fan. You got it. So I remember his his time on the Lakers. And, uh, yeah, I just I just like trying to think of just a random NBA player. Just because. Yeah, that was <laughs> – I, that's that's that was my guess, and it makes it even better. I really appreciated <laughs> that answer. Um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, so, with uh, being back in LA, I mean, what have kind of um, have you been able to reconnect with people you knew, and um, kind of uh, you know, I'm sure you're familiar with guys on the team, but have you been able to kind of get reconnected with the fabric of kind of people you were around when you were here last? Yeah, for sure. My whole like outside my family. My whole basketball support system is is in California for the most part. Um, I got like a lot of like my high school coach, uh, AAU coaches, basketball trainers. Um, even goes down to like camera people and pastors and and everything like that. Even my old nanny, like, Aww. like yeah. So you know, like my whole support system's out here. So it's being great. Oh, uh, that's, that's, that's awesome. Um, yeah. all right. So you've been, you've been deep into practices now. You guys are, uh, heavily into it. Um, and I think the full roster there as of this week with, uh, Dominic Harris showing up, mm-hmm. um, what's it been like, uh, can you give people kind of an insight into what these practices have been like? I mean, it's, it's 14 scholarship level dudes and then, you know, Christian Ori as well, but, um, 14 scholarship level dudes, how has that competition been so far? Uh, it's been super intense and it's been super competitive. Uh, whenever we scrimmage, it's like people are diving on the floor for loose balls. Like uh, I think two days ago, uh, Eric and and Will were fighting for a rebound and they were on the ground wrestling for the ball for like five minutes. And Coach didn't stop it; he just let it go. So it's been super intense. I, I love this squad. I do, and everyone on the team is super close. There's no egos. There's no groups. Like everyone is just what. It's just one big unit, so it's been amazing. From an intensity level, has uh, play, has being coached by Coach Cronin been about what you expected it to be, or has any part of that been eye opening? Yeah, yeah. The players from last year they they gave me the rundown before <laughs> practice started, so I already knew what I was walking into. Um, and then, so where have you been uh, fitting in so far? I mean, I imagine you're playing some on the ball, some off the ball, but where 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 have you kind of been fitting in, and where do they see you slotting in? Yeah, really just doing both. Uh, me and DA, and we got Trent, uh, we got Baz, we got Dom, uh, we got Freeney. We got a lot of people that can handle the ball. So really just uh, – I've really just been trying to take on that leadership role and uh, helping the younger guys and then showing them, like, what it really means to play college basketball because it's a big jump from high school to college. Uh, the intensity, the speed, the physicality. So I've been trying to just just help them with that, and uh, just doing whatever I can. I've really been focusing on my defense and uh, and my shooting this summer too. So it's been huge. Uh, get into those freshmen a little bit. Um, you know, Trent and you you're you're an old vet now. You've been around the block. Uh, what do you see out of those guys? What do you what do you where do you think their areas of growth are, Trent and Eric? Nah, they're really, they've been really good. They've been really great for us. Uh, Trent, obviously, he's a he's a great playmaker. Uh, he could shoot the hell out of the ball, so that's gonna be that's gonna be huge for us. Uh, Freeney, he's probably the most physical freshman I've I've ever played against. He's super physical. He uses his body really well. And he he got some of the best pivot footwork I've I've seen in my days of hooping. So it's been they they've been really good. They gonna they gonna uh, continue to keep on improving throughout the year, and you are gonna see some some big games from them. Yeah, I saw a clip of him. Uh, I think in the Rico's runs where he was fighting with some NBA guy for a ball, and he seemed uh, <laughs> pretty yeah. aggressive about it. Yeah, Freeney don't back down. He, he's <laughs> he's super physical. All right, then. Um, I mean, I know some some people have obviously got familiarity with you from high school, and they watched some of you at Louisville and Illinois. But for the fans who haven't watched a ton of your game, what do you think your strengths are at this point in your development as a player? Yeah, really just um, I've been known as a scorer, so I've been trying to um, really balance out that scoring and playmaking, becoming like a, a real complete uh, complete PG. But obviously, uh, 
I can score the ball. I can shoot the ball. Um, I've been picking up on defense a lot as of recent, uh, thanks to Coach Crony. <laughs> and, uh, nah, just someone who can really do it all, just a really dynamic player. Um, that's about it. Yeah, so I'm starting to get my athleticism back too. So, yeah, well, and this is and this is one thing that people uh, might not be as familiar with. You tore your ACL pretty late in high school, wasn't that uh, junior year? Yeah, going uh, summer going into my senior year in July. How, how long do you think it took before you uh, had I don't know trust in that knee back? Did it take a couple years? Because I know for like Tiger Campbell back in the day, it took him two years minimum before he was fully back. Yeah, that's what I've always said. Um, people say the, the ACL process is a nine-month thing, but it's really like a two-year thing, like you said with Cam, uh, with Tiger. And uh, that first year is just rehab, physical therapy, all the boring stuff, stuff you, you've you already been doing. And then that second year is really just the mental part, yeah. like really just trusting yourself again and really letting yourself go. And uh, each year I say – I feel like I've I've gotten through that hump, but you know, I just keep I just keep getting through it. But but this year I've been making huge strides for sure. That's great. And so um, you mentioned up top one of the things Coach Cronin was frank with you about was cutting down turnovers. With from what you've learned so far with Cronin, or just like playing basketball, what is that? Does that come down to certain like tactical choices you can make? Certain like passes don't make that pass, make this pass, or is it just focus? Like, wh- wh- Take us through, Like, how do you improve at something like that? Uh, I think the biggest thing was slowing down. And um, when you get to the paint, you don't got to go 1,000 miles per hour. And uh, another thing was we really focus on playing off two feet, and that's been huge. That's been, that's been saving me a lot. Uh, so those two things. And then the third thing, which is also huge, is just being in shape. I think the better shape you're in, the less mental mistakes you make. And right. so you're, you're in better control of yourself. So those three things I've been really harping on and Coach Cronin has been really harping on with me. And I've made some some really huge strides, I feel like. And then um, we're obviously doing this interview uh, through Men of Westwood. Um, wh- just talk about Men of Westwood and the relationship you've built there and, and what kind of value they've brought to uh, the program and you and, and so on. Absolutely. Now, Men of Westwood, they've been great. Uh, big shout out to them. Uh, they're always at the practices, just showing love, just always showing support. Uh, I mean, even one night we went bowling and they were there and they're talking trash to us <laughs> and everything. So it's been great. They're, they're a great group of people, uh, especially my guy, Ken. He's huge. Uh, so, yeah, they've been they've been amazing. All right, I got I to gotta know about bowling, though. I mean, who's the best bowler? So you've spent time in the Midwest, so I'm assuming you should be pretty good. But who's the best bowler? On the team? <laughs> That's what you think. Nah, uh, I mean, did I? I feel like I think I got the highest score. Uh, me, Freeney, and uh, who else? Coach Nate, that's the one. Oh, yeah, yeah, he bowled like a 160 at the 162. Well, that's the Ohio native, you know, yeah, he's, he's, so he's, he's, he don't about count, it. but <laughs> but yeah, I think me and Freeney are probably the, probably the best that night. Yeah, I wonder how like really tall guys bowl. Like, you know, how's a die doing? You know, getting down and, and spinning that ball. A die was there. A die got a nice little swing to him. He <laughs> um, and then uh, I wanted to ask because um, obviously this was a, a big thing over the summer um, with your dad uh, suffering a stroke, I believe. Um, can you give everyone an update on that? And obviously, everyone wishes him well, but um, can you give everyone an update on on how things stand there and how he's doing and what the road to recovery looks like. Nah, for sure. I appreciate that. Um, he's been good. Um, he's in Nashville now recovering. Uh, he still can't walk or talk, but he's eating and drinking like regular foods on his own. And like, if you tell him inside jokes, he'll laugh and, uh, and stuff like that. So he's showing a lot of good signs and I know it's going to be a long process. Uh, I know a few people who have had suffered from strokes and they said that they didn't even walk or talk for like seven months. So yeah. I know it's definitely going to be a long road, but but he's a fighter, so he's been he's been making huge strides for sure. Well, that's great to hear. I think uh, you know, obviously, that's it'll be a long road, but I think everyone will uh, be very happy to see him walking and talking here soon, and hopefully, coming to Poly at some point to watch you play. <laughs> Absolutely, he'll definitely be there. All right. Well, thank you so much, Sky. Really appreciate the time, and uh, best of luck with the rest of the summer and heading into the season. Thank you. I appreciate you.